Welcome back. In today's video, I want to do a Q&A. It's been a while since I've done one of these. If you want to learn what to do with hundred thousand pounds, how to invest during a time in which interest rates are rising, then stick around as I've got some great questions and answers to share with you. So to kick us straight off, let's get straight into the questions. And the first one is with interest rates rising, do you get tempted to make overpayments on your mortgages? And of course, this is a very topical question right now with the state of interest rates. This is actually probably one of the main times in which I'm least likely to go out and start making overpayments. Whether you do that in big chunks or whether you do that in little chunks, right now, I wanna make sure that I conserve cash. Right now, I wanna make sure that I've got every one of my properties cash flowing as much as possible. I don't wanna take the money I've got in the bank to pay off debt and then now have less money in the bank as a reserve, as a protection if rates continue to rise. Likewise, if I'm gonna start paying more monthly, I don't wanna do that. I wanna make sure that right now when properties are cash flowing even less because of interest rates, I don't want to start giving away more of that. I want to conserve that monthly cash flow each month. Now, that was my first thought. And my second thought on this question is all about the history of property, because we know, generally speaking, over longer periods of time, properties will go up in value. Whether that's 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, over time, the property values will shoot up. So I want to be holding properties, holding my equity in those properties whilst the values go up. And at the same time, I kind of want to have as much as safely possible in terms of debt. Because at the same time, we know that the value of money is coming down. Well, I don't want my money going down in value. I want the bank's debt, their money going down in value. So at the same time as prices going up, I want a reasonably safe amount, but quite a high amount of debt, because that will go down in value. And then my equity will naturally grow in between anyway. So that's my initial thought on that. Moving on to question number two, what is the best way to start property investing with no money? I get asked this question a lot, given the fact that I do two main strategies. One of them, of course, is buy to let investing, but the other strategy that I do is sourcing or I run a deal packaging business. So therefore, I get a lot of interest in that and a lot of people asking the questions, how can I start that? How can I replicate it? Because it doesn't require much money to get started. So when I have this question, I often try to put people in one of two directions. If you've got no money and you know property is what you want to get into, you need to figure out which direction you want to go in terms of building an active business or more of a passive business. You know, are you getting started to run a deal sourcing business or a rent to rent business? Or are you getting started to build a portfolio? If you go down the first route, well, of course, you know, that is great for no money. You need to learn and acquire the skills and then you can start to source properties for other people or you can start to control properties for other people and rent them out as either HMOs or serviced accommodation. And that is a great way to get yourself started with no or little money. It does have to be say, you always need a little bit of money for certain things that come up along the way. If on the other hand, you are more inclined to build a portfolio, something that is more of a priority for you is building up those investments, then you need to go, right, I'm not looking to do this active business. I want this portfolio. I want to build wealth through owning assets. Well, then you need to take the completely opposite route and you need to learn and acquire the skills that it takes to purchase those properties, add value, and then refinance or flip them. And you need to be able to pair that with a private investor's funds or money. You need to learn how to raise money or find and attract joint venture partners. So I would say it's difficult, but still realistic to get started with no money. It just depends which route you want to go down. Is it all about earning cash and getting cash in? Go down the active route. Is it more about building assets and wealth? Go down the route of finding good deals and then pairing it with money that you've raised or partners that you're going into business with. So I hope that answers that question. Next question being, Justin, if you had to choose one strategy right now and you had to stick to it, what would it be? Now, the answer to that question is simple for me and I hope it's not too boring for you, but I always go back to my roots. When you watch those initial videos when I got started in property, you will see me talking about purchasing buy to lets holding them long term, renting them out as hands off as possible, which is generally kind of, you know, vanilla buy to net style properties. Nothing has changed. Although I have built up other strategies around it, I've built a sourcing business, I do a bit of trading properties now, 
I will always revert back to what got me started. And that's because that is the one main focus. Everything else is a massive bonus to me. It levels up my lifestyle, but everything else I'm doing, I'm kind of investing back into that main strategy, which is build up a portfolio of buy to let. Now, I hope that answers that question. And I know it's a little bit boring, but what I would say back to you as well, as someone asking that question is, try and always pick one main thing to focus on. You'll get far bigger and better results from choosing one avenue than you will trying to divide your time up into three or four avenues. I know obviously, you know, I'm guilty of doing that myself and that's because I love the game. I enjoy doing multiple things, keeping busy. But if I had to pick one, I know that I'd see exponential results in building my portfolio uh, of properties. So good question, enjoyed that one. Next one is, are you leveraged at 75% across your whole portfolio? And the answer is no. A lot of you might think it's probably yes. And, and the vast majority of my portfolio is a yes in the sense that the properties that I've purchased, I've added value to, and then I've refinanced. Of course, I'm refinancing them with a new 75% mortgage. And what I hate to see is then people that continue to refinance those properties. I really believe that you should try and push up the value, eke the value out of that property, and then back off of it. Let it gain in equity, let it perform better over the years. So what I've done with those properties is of course, leave them at their 75%. So of course, yes, a large portion of my portfolio is at that. But my initial purchase, that first property, I've never touched since acquisition. So paid 58,000, it's worth somewhere in the region of 90 to 100,000. So I have that property there, which the debt is considerably low in exchange to the potential end value if I was to sell it tomorrow or refinance it. So majority of my portfolio is highly leveraged at 75%, but I have that initial property, which is obviously considerably lower. And I will probably leave that property at that low debt to value ratio for now until either the interest rates come down and it makes sense to uh, refinance or unless I see just such a great deal opportunity where it does actually make sense to take a bit of that capital out. But generally speaking, I have a plan in mind that over the first five to 10 years, I'm doing this plan of growing my portfolio at this percentage. Years 10 to 15, I'm gonna start paying down this part of my portfolio, switching this percentage to repayment. And then as, as you can see, as a picture is going on there, the more that time goes on, the more it's important for me to start paying down some of the debt the more important it is for me to release and perhaps get rid of some of the underperforming assets. And then hopefully at the end of my career, when I'm looking to really take a step back, then I'll have this very efficient portfolio where I own a large amount of equity in it. And I can certainly pay off some of the older properties and pay off the debt off of some of those. Next question, is now a good time to buy? I've got one buy to let and I want my second one, but worried about the market, should I wait? Well, my immediate question to that is, should you wait for what? I guess what I would always say in response to that is my view on property investing comes from someone that I met early on into my property journey, very thankful for it, because my view on property investing is always buy at the right price. So you should always be buying properties provided you are securing them at the right price. You're building in that discount, building in that equity from day one. Someone once said to me, which I constantly repeat because I love it. I think it's a very good way to view property, very simplistic way, which is if you wanted to buy four properties, are you better to buy one property per year for the next four years? Or are you better to wait until the perfect timing and then buy all four at that time? And of course, as you could probably imagine, the better response or the better thing to do is buy one per year over the next four years. A, because you're more likely to actually fulfill that goal one per year rather than trying to do four in one year and B, because the chances of you timing the market at one per year means that one or two of those will be perfect timing. Maybe one or two aren't perfect timing. If you're trying to wait for the perfect time in the market, inevitably, you will probably miss it. And therefore, you are always better to just consistently purchase, but over longer periods of time. You know, when I hear people saying, should I wait? I just remember myself a few years ago. Oh, this is worrying me. I'm gonna wait six months. Oh, that's worrying me. I'm gonna wait six months. And actually the best thing I've ever done is just continue to purchase through all markets and just fall back on my fundamentals, which is buying good properties in good areas at the right price. Hope that was a good answer for you there. That's what I, I truly believe through and through. I'm still buying. I've got three purchases going through 
right now as we speak. Uh, next question, what is better, joint ventures or raising private funds? And I mean, you know, there's chalk and cheese, they're two completely different things. Uh, I, I find that it's probably easier to do joint ventures because someone has an invested interest into that business. So it's easier to find them because someone is, you know, really got a stake of that business. And therefore, it's quite an easy thing to go and meet. You know, if you're looking for someone with a similar kind of goal as you in property, you could meet them quite easily. Whereas perhaps it's slightly harder to find someone that will loan you the money, trust you with that money with no stake in the property, and then obviously for you to repay it at the end. What I would say is just think truly, truly about your goals from now. Is it to rapidly grow, perhaps quicker with less risk, but also give away 50% to someone else? Or do you want to you know, raise the funds, but own 100% yourself? Of course, it comes with more risk. You are more responsible. It might take longer, but at least you have 100% of the portfolio at the end. So you've got to really think solidly about that. How do you feel 10 years, 20 years from now, however long, when, when you own that with someone else versus owning it completely outright yourself? I'm not here to judge. I've got a bit of both. So do what's best for you. Next question being, how would you invest £100,000 as a beginner property investor? And first of all, of course, congratulations to you having £100,000 in the bank and congratulations for making that decision that the best place to invest it is in property. I'm sure you've done lots of homework around it and now you're trying to refine what you should do with it. The most important thing to realize with property is that it's a very expensive game. You know, £100,000 is a lot of money, but it also can go very quickly when you're investing into property, whether that be one property or three properties, you know, it goes quickly. And most property investors along their journey will come to the same realization. And that is that money is a finite thing. It's a finite object. And at some point you will always run out if you are growing quick enough. So if you have plans to build a big portfolio, you should straight away be thinking about how you can replenish this capital whilst you're continuing to build your portfolio. So it really depends on your goals for the portfolio. If it's large, you need to really think big and really think smart from day one. If it's smaller, if it's you know a case of having two or three buy to lets, then it's very different because you can just go out and acquire them. You could probably purchase three buy to lets in certain parts of the north of the UK, get your cash flow, and then happy days, you know, you, you take your profit each month. If you are the first one though, if you are the larger one, I would really think about doing something where you can replenish the capital, as I've just said, and that would be something along the lines of, you know, the buy, refurbish, refinance strategy. It might also be adding in an element of flips. It might be doing the, you know, buy two, sell one strategy where you just continuously try and find deals. And every two or three deals, you actually flip one of those to replenish you know, the 20, 30,000 that you might leave in other deals. So you're constantly trying to rotate that capital. Otherwise you will find that you come to a dead stop very, very quickly. But what I would do is get very focused on your strategy, whether that be, you know, buy to that service accommodation, HMOs, and then I'd get very clear on what you want from this. Is it 20 buy to lets or is it two or three? Because that will allow the roadmap to kind of play out in front of you and then you can really uh, focus in on what route you want to take. And next question is, what methods bring you the most deals? Very short, sweet question. I'm sure they're meaning in relation to my portfolio or my sourcing business. What methods bring the most property deals through to us? And you might be surprised by this one. And that is because we, of course, run multiple different strategies. You know, we run a lot of letter campaigns, two different styles of letter campaign. I have also run and tested and tried a lot of Facebook and Google ads over the last year to see what is the most efficient. But actually, if I had to pick something which is the most effective strategy, it would actually be property portals. I know I've said the obvious there, but you need to start thinking about this differently. Rather than putting a lot of output and potentially wasting a lot of time on vendors and owners that don't actually want to sell, maybe just go to the place where you know they want to sell. Because whether it's Rightmove, it's Zoopla, it's on the market, all these other property portals, when someone lists their property, they are saying to you, I am motivated to sell my property. In most instances, of course, there's some circumstances where people are testing the market, but generally speaking, there's a motivation there, someone wants to sell, you want to buy, and actually if you spend more time there, more time viewing, more time with agents, the opportunity is way more likely to open up in front of you rather than sending out letters, running Facebook campaigns and costing yourself fortune of time and money. And that is it. 
I hope it's been an interesting watch. I haven't done a Q&A in a while. If you liked it, put a comment below. I would love to know if you have any follow-up questions. Perhaps I can do another one in future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.